Hello everybody and welcome to another video. We are not at the boat here today because it's the dead of winter here in Germany. Instead we are here to test our new self-contained AC circuit. It's composed of a battery, an inverter charger and a generator. Last week we already set up the generator, so why don't you have a look at that while we are getting everything ready here. Since the generator was completely new and never ran before, we first needed to fill it up with some oil. For this we took 15W40 as recommended by the manufacturer. After the oil was filled up, we could add some diesel fuel. Alright, here we have a little 12 volt fuel pump, which we're going to use later uh, on the boat to fill up the diesel generator or the diesel heaters, so that we don't have to go around with this thing and uh, fill them up manually. And so we have set it up here in a little testing station. This is There she goes. We give it a couple of pulls to let the cylinder rotate and lubricate itself. Next we put it outside for its first start. So here's our AC setup and you'll find links to each of the devices in the description of this video. And I'm not going to go too much into detail in this video because we're actually starting a new channel called Marine Tech Corner. So have a look at that if you want to know more about each of these devices. For now, let's have a look what we got here. So let's start with our battery. It's a lithium iron phosphate battery set up in a 24 volt configuration with about 200 amp hours capacity. Here on top is the battery management system or BMS, which is like a computer that manages the flow of electricity into and out of the battery. The battery is hooked up to the inverter charger with DC wiring in appropriate thickness. Then on the other end of the system we have our diesel generator, which we'll use to charge the batteries or if we ever need more power then can be delivered by the inverter alone. And then here in the center of our system we have our inverter charger. It's a Victron Quattro 5000 24 volt 120 amps. This will take the AC from the generator, convert it into DC to be stored in the batteries and then make it available again as AC to our loads. Here on the very left we have a Victron 702 battery monitor to have a more accurate measurement of what goes into and out of the battery. Finally, here we have our AC breakers, DC negative bus bar, a battery switch, our main DC fuse and this is the shunt for the battery monitor. All right, now it's time to start the generator. Okay, great. First, we're gonna test the voltage coming in from the generator, coming in from here. Okay, so we have 230 volts coming in. Next we're going to turn on the breakers. We're going to launch the inverter charger. Oh. Alright, so the inverter is running. Let's see if we have power here. And we didn't have power. But this was only due to a loose cable at the back of the outlet. The real problem we had at that point was that we couldn't get the charger to run. It would turn on for a second and then turn off again. After some time troubleshooting, trying different programs on the inverter, which is done by changing the position of eight tiny dip switches here on the main board of the Quattro. We even looked at the shape of the sine wave of the power coming from the generator. Maybe the issue would be there. But it turned out to be quite beautiful actually. 
Eventually, we found the issue and fixed it. Now exactly what was the issue is way too specific for this video, I'm just happy we actually found it and got the system to work properly afterwards. Now let's do our first test to see if we can actually draw 5000 watts out of this setup. For this we brought three devices. The two hair dryers draw about 2200 and 2500 watts. The jigsaw has an adjustable speed and draws between 200 and 400 watts. Running all three together should get us slightly above 5000 watts. We're using a clamp meter to measure the current pulled by the inverter, which draws about 3.5 amps while at idle. Now let's start the first dryer. Immediately the current draw jumps over 100 amps. The BMS shows a similar value, although not so accurately. And on the battery monitor we read 2.2 kilowatts. With the second dryer running, the power consumption goes up to 4.7 kilowatts. And we're drawing almost 230 amps on the DC side. Next we will start the jigsaw first at the lowest level, which brings us just shy of 5000 watts. Now, as we are cranking up the speed on the jigsaw, the power draw goes up to 5.1 kilowatts. And the current is almost at 250 amps. And at that moment, the fuse started smoking. I didn't notice it at first, but you can see it here in the background. Now, although this fuse is rated at 400 amps, at 250 amps, it started to heat up so much that the plastic around it started to melt and the whole thing started smoking. I read online that ANL fuses should be avoided. And now I know why. Anyway, we only plan to use this type of fuse for this test here. For the actual setup, we got a very pricey Class T fuse from Blue Sea. The second test was about charging the batteries with the power from the generator. And with the inverter properly configured, it's working right away. We can see the current on the DC plus cable is now negative which means that the current is flowing in the other direction. In other words, the battery is being charged. Admittedly, we did not have enough time to test this more thoroughly and I wasn't really sure if we should at this point since the lithium battery can be damaged if charged too quickly. So we decided to leave it at that for now. The third and final test was to check if the generator is running and we are using our loads. The power would actually come from the generator and not from the battery. We can confirm this because the battery monitor now shows a positive wattage number which means that the batteries are being charged as opposed to a negative number as we had before when we were pulling the loads when the generator was not running. So the power must be coming from the generator looped through the inverter. Alright, we are done here with our testing today and I'm really happy uh, the way it went. We managed to test all the things we wanted to test, so we tried to charge the batteries from the generator and after some troubleshooting in the beginning we managed to get that work. We were able to test the discharge from the battery all the way up to over 5000 watts so that the fuse actually almost blew and we managed to uh, use the, the power that comes directly from the generator through the inverter and then directly to the outlet so that we can use more than 5000 watts. So overall I would say it was a total success today. Thank you all for watching and see you next time.